Hello everyone, good evening, good night, good morning. My name is Erico Campos and I'm a professor here at UNESP Bauru, Sao Paulo, Brazil. And this lecture is a part of, of our virtual exchange class that we are doing this, this semester with our colleagues in Florida, United States and Japan. Uh, my class will be about self and personality and I will show you in a very summarized way uh, what we have been working on this semester on my course of psychoanalysis and personality. So, uh, it's important that we start uh, talking about how our culture and our legacy from our Western and modern culture, it works with a lot of concepts about uh, the self, the subject, and we have uh, some ancient myths that we will work with and that psychoanalysis uh, uses as a metaphor for their theory. And all of those, they usually start uh, or point out how important is the other to the sense of self and how is important the conscious thinking and mind as the basis and foundation of our sense of self and our, of our subjectivity. So that's why here I put some, some important thinkers and, and uh, poets from our time. So Descartes that says, I think, therefore I am. And Humboldt that say, the I is another. To start with our discussion. The first thing that I have to point out is that the science of psychology is based on the modern conception of subjectivity and mind. So it's important because we are doing a, a, a virtual exchange on, on culture and personality. And it's, it's important to say that the way that we think ourselves today is a legacy from the Western modern culture, where the psychological ego is the center and the definition of ourselves. So uh, Michel Foucault and others uh, workers on the history of psychology and, and, and science usually stress out that fact. And it's important that we begin with this idea that uh, the science of psychology, as we know, is only possible on the Western modern society where the I, the subject of knowledge, is the foundation of the humanity. So uh, the subject of knowledge and the social individuality are the basic traits of our psychological experience. So since the modern ages, we define mankind and the subject of man by its rational thinking the self-conscious and the responsibility of for the acts and choices and this is the basis for the whole science of psychology in in its many uh, perspectives and trends the general psychology the 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 psychology that originates from the 19th century and the 20th century uh, that we usually uh, study on general psychology classes, uh, it's still the basis for most of psychology, psychoanalysis and psychiatry because it's based on modern philosophy, uh, understanding of our subject of knowledge. So in general psychology, some basic phenomena are usually described so we have sensation and perception, we have motricity, we have memory, we have motivation and emotion, and we have language and thinking. These are all basic uh, phenomena. And there are also complex processes 
gross complex phenomena known as personality, identity, and the self or subject. One thing that is important that we stress out here, especially on this virtual exchange, is that there are some language differences between the terms, the concepts, the notions that we use. So in English and German, uh, usually we have this, this, this noun, uh, the self, uh, that uh, it's, it gives the sense of, uh, uh, selfness. What what can I say of uh, of a sense of being someone? Yeah? So it's a reflexive uh, particle that you use on on many pronouns. So yourself, myself, yeah? oneself. So uh, in it's interesting because in the French and Latin English languages like Portuguese and Spanish, uh, we don't have this same resource. So we call it si mesmo, but it's not something that is natural from our language. So in, in French and Latin, we usually use another word that is subject. And that word, even though it's used in English, it's not very common. And usually it's, it's, it has, it, it stresses another and other senses. So the subject is the subject of speech, or the subject is the uh, theme th that you were talking about. But in Portuguese and French and, and these Latin languages, subject is the uh, active uh, subject of action. So the I uh, is a subject and the activity of the eye is subject. And we, what you usually say as the self, the sense of self, we say it's the subject or uh, uh, subjectivity, as we more recently are used to, to call. So I'll, I'll start this class showing that difference because what you call self, the sense of wholeness, and uh, belonging, we we use the term, the noun, the the word subject. Anyhow, self and subject, or self, we, we I use here self and subject as synonyms, as the same thing. So mind and conscience are the foundations of a modern psychological ego. So all this, the modern psychology is, a, is based on consciousness, and consciousness is a reflective action of uh, cognition, of rationality, of reason. So in this broader and generical sense, the subject or self is the whole person and its psychological features. So it's not only the mind or the thinking, it's the sense of being someone of being a subject or being an agent. So this is related to the experience of an I, of a myself as the subject of speech and also as the source of will. So uh, the subject has an action. It has a position where it desires, with brings and reaches, reaches out for things so that Conception is very important. So the, the self and subject in a general sense is the, an agent and a sense of self-awareness that is often described as an ego. So ego is a Latin word for I or eu in, in, in Portuguese. We, we call it I. Just a minute. Uh, so uh, we use to, to use this word ego, Freud called, uh, uh, named his personality instances with these names, but it's used in a broader sense. So in a broader and generical sense, ego is the same thing as self and subject, is the whole uh, person 
and its psychological features. But uh, if we describe it with a more theoretical uh, concern, we'll find some differences. So the first one is the ego identity, the sense of the I as a one thing, as a, a, a one thing, as a unity. So the ego has a self-representation as an as idea of itself and a conception of otherness. So the ego uh, knows itself as a subject and recognizes the others as having an ego themselves. That's what in philosophy we call a theory of mind. Theory of mind. So it recognizes and values itself, that's the ego, and also is recognized in a series of social roles that give it the sense of identity. So identity is a social uh, concept, and identity is the set of roles, the series of roles that we play on social relationships and that are of a very different uh, fashions. So we have the gender, the ethnicity, the ethnical and racial trends, nationality, profession, and so on. So, even though the sense of identities is a representation of the ego, of what it is, of what it represents, uh, so it's based on our symbolic language and, and our cognitive skills, it is created by a relation, a relational, because it's always in a relation, a social relation, that identity is, is, uh, is uh, recognized. And it always by an affective means. So identity is not only a cognitive and symbolical uh, phenomena, it's an affective phenomena, because we uh, recognize by identification processes. So we identify yourself, ourselves with the other by our common sets of trends. So we have the same name, we have uh, the same origin, we like the same bands, we like the same food, whatever. So it's by that identification with some traits that we usually, uh, uh, in psychoanalysis, say we interject, we put our uh, put the other, uh, this this identification of the other as a, a model for ourselves. And the set of psychological trends that give characteristic features and moral values to a person is known as personality. So personality is more than the conscious mind and more than the individual identities because it comprehends, it comprises our affective moods and ways to deal with other people. So personality is a little bit different from identity. It's not about what we are, uh, our name, uh, our gender, our profession. It's how we are, uh, how we think, how, how, how we work with our emotions, with our more intuitive, we are rational, we are expansive, we are introspective, and so on. So these are often understood as intrinsic character traits. Uh, where is it? Okay. Uh, in the history of psychology and psychiatry, uh, these. Uh, these traits were uh, assessed by uh, psychological evaluation or psychiatric evaluation. So we have a, a series of projective tests uh, that uh, describe and assess and characterize the personal traits of everyone. Uh, nowadays, uh, both identity and personality are understood as psychosocial processes. So it means that they are developed in a complex relation and interaction between biological, psychological, and sociological factors. Uh, so they used to say that identity was a social concept 
and personality was an inner uh, and uh, intrinsic concept. So we, it was basically uh, inherited traits. But nowadays, you understand that they are both complex psychosocial uh, processes. And that means that uh, they are beyond the usual dissociated views of human development. So that's very important because on uh, developmental psychology, we study that, uh, that in uh, the history of development psychology, uh, there are those uh, dissociations between uh, a set of what is individual and what is universal, from what's biological and what is environmental, and how much is individual, how much is universal, how much is nature, how much is nurture. And nowadays, we understand that all these factors, they uh, work together and most theories have to to account for those factors how much of biological how much of individual singular universal and and uh, psycho uh, social environmental uh, factors are working to to configure uh, a personality so uh, on this brief introduction we can set this model, this, this figure, where we, we can show that these concepts, they have uh, different uh, extensions. So there is the social environment, the context where everyone is uh, develops and inhabits, and there is the self, that is the whole person, so it's, it's not only the mind, it's the body, it's a psychosomatic being. In the sense of being uh, uh, someone, it's the self. And inside the self and inside the mind, if we're a psychologist at least, uh, it, it, it stands the personality, that is the whole set of mental structures, of mechanisms of functions of uh, moods and and all that uh, values and inside personality there is a smaller uh, sense of identity that's the ego so the ego is the part of personality where the person, the self, recognizes is itself as an I, as an individual, as an identity, and it has a sense of self-representation and has a value, a value of itself, a self-esteem, as we, we say. Well, now we will talk about the psychodynamic perspective, so the, the, the theoretical uh, trend tendency that we work here in this class and, and in Brazil that uh, I will show to you. So, as I said, traditionally, the personality assessment has been made by psychiatric and psychological evaluation on clinical examination, in the case of psychiatry, and psychometric instruments, basically projective tests. Uh, on this context, the psychoanalytic perspective was a pioneer on that matter, on doing uh, assessment of personality. And it set a view of psycholog psychological structures in a dynamic relation of drives and desires in a conflict with mechanism of defense and demands from reality. So the psychodynamic perspective is because there is conflict, there is a, 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 a play in a conflict of forces, of drives, of desires that go against our moral values, that go against reality, but uh, some of, the, of them do not. So they, they enrich reality, they, they give sense to the self. And for psychoanalysis, all the personality comes from, from our affection, our motivation, from our drives 
or instincts. So Freud, as you know, and post-Freudian psychoanalysis like Eric Erikson, Melanie Klein, Bion, Bowlby, Winnicott, these are all very important and current studied psychoanalysis, but also dissidents like Alfred Adler and, and Carl Jung are referred uh, to, this, to this theoretical perspective. On this theory, personality is always a complex structure of subsistence in a dynamic relation of forces. Freud gave it a start with his structure model of personality comprising ED, ED, ego and super ego. So that's some representations of the, the, the Freudian model. Uh, the one at the right side is the official representation that Freud gave on, on his text of the ED, ego and super ego. And this one is on the left is the one that usually you find on, on handbooks of psychology, of developmental psychology or personality psychology. It's known as iceberg model, né? where there's the unconscious mind beneath the water and most of the ego, the superego and the ego are unconscious. And there is the conscious part of the, the personality and the mind that is the ego and superego. So most of our, our personality is in conscious, unconscious uh, in a psychoanalytical perspective. So just a tiny part of ego and superego are actually conscious and are on the use of the conscious will. So id, or it, origin is the originary instance of personality, and it's oriented by the pleasure principle. The id is, is it moves towards pleasure. It is the drive source and the continent for our desires and repressed fantasies. So all our desires that our defenses do not let become conscious, they stay and they are actually repressed and put away on it. Ego, or I, is the set of mental functions. So the psychological self, the psychological mind, the basic uh, psychology phenomena. So the ego is where you, there is perception, there is no, uh, language, there is thinking, and also the defense mechanisms. But it also has a self-representation and value. Uh, so it has a representation of itself. It is oriented by the principle of reality. So it seeks for the adaptation to reality. And, and it seeks for integration to be co coherent, to has a unicity uh, structure and sense, and autonomy to be uh, strong enough to set its own rules uh, in, in his need to adaptation over the reality, over the demands of id, and over the demands of superego. Superego, sorry, I, sp I spoke in Portuguese. Superego, or uh, super I, the, the one that is above the I, is the moral and critical instant, but also the display of social ideals for the ego. So superego criticizes, observes, it sets the moral values and ideals that make the ego repress some desires, but it gives, it also gives the models of being a man, a woman, a child, and an adult, a, 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 a good worker, a good citizen, and, and, and so on. It's interesting that uh, ego and superego, they are developments from our originary and, and primary self. In, in the beginning, there is only id. And then during the personality development, ego and superego uh, are created. 
and they are created for by sorry they are created by identification processes so the ego uh, it's result of the identification of the conscious the id with some objects of reality uh, and so it interjects the objects its representations its symbols and also its functions uh, the the primary objects are the the the, the ones that are responsible for uh, the parenthood the care of the baby this uh, the, the the mother the father or who else is in the, that position and the functions that are expected to a mother a father a caretaker uh uh perform in, in in a way to to make a baby becomes a ch child and a child becomes uh an adolescent and and an adult so identification processes are the way that the objects and the rules and the symbols of culture are interjected uh, and become part of the personality ego is a product of the narcissistic state and superego is the product product of the oedipus complex well i'll, I'll not uh, talk about these concepts and the theory of development on, on psychoanalysis because we need a whole co course for that but it's important that you know and that's why you have narcissus and oedipus at the the prologue of this class uh superego is a product of the oedipus complex it's the sense of duty the sense the moral sense and the sense of social order and social adaptation the ego is the sense of identity of an eye né? Uh, and that is a product of the identification with the narcissistic stage of development so the ego is a product of the identification with the uh, motherhood functions the, the motherhood function and the Oedipus is a product of the father function. Anyway, the resolution of the Oedipus complex is the central issue for the personality configuration, because there's where the interjection of moral law and the repression of the capital desires and capital crimes, the recessal and homicidal drives. So you may not uh kill your father your mother your children and you may not uh have sex with them that's the basic law of civilization civilization so uh this means and that's what is important for our class today is narcissism and oedipus uh are the processes by which the otherness, the sense of alterity, the sense of the other, is craved into self. So our, our personality is mobilized and shaped in structures by taking to itself the rules, the models, and, and the symbols of the culture so that's why the personality is the introjection of the culture in first sense in a very singular way in a singular personality but everyone uh, has to uh, to learn how to work with culture to be part of culture to have culture into itself and to become human. So there are some universal cult cultural rules like the mandatory prohibitions of any social order. So the, these ones of the Oedipus, the, the two rules and of, of repression that are uh, set on Oedipus resolution, they are universal because any social order has 
these prohibitions. They are mandatory. And there are many particular ideals in each culture. So each culture has its sense of gen, gen, of uh, gender, uh, of what is a man, what is a woman, what, what is to, what is expected for family, what is expected for some institutions. So each culture has its language, its, its ways of being and its ways of acting. So there are many uh, social and values that vary from each culture to each culture. So there are universal cultural rules and many particular ideals that vary, that change from one culture to other. So they are cultural in a sense. Every culture, its history has a set of symbols, a set of ideals and culture sustain our personality development and culture results, culture itself results from the drives. So the fostering of the drives and the work upon the drives is what, is what makes culture possible. And the, the, the work of introjecting cultural rules and become someone, a personality, an ego, this work must be done every time for every single individual in its socialization process. So, culture is the guardian, the caretaker of social values and symbols that, symbols that stands as ideals to groups and individuals. So, culture is the, the general reference for all individuals. There are social values, there are ideals that stand on the culture and there are references for the culture. And we must relate to that, we must interject it and we must uh, have it as an, an reference or to be like it or to uh, say no to it. But it's a reference that stays for everyone. So the ego ideal, is a component of superego that results from these identifications. So it acts like a goal and directed to the ego. The ego has an ideal that says you must be this, that, and that. That's how to be a man. That's how to be a father. Has that? That's how to be a woman. That's how to be a boyfriend. How that should? Be, that's how a marriage works. That's how uh, we must uh, work as any profession, and so on. That's how it's to be American, that's how to be uh, Brazilian, that's how to be Japanese, Japanese don't do that, things like that. Brazilians always do that. So we have these values that stand on culture and they are, they are references to us and they are introjected in us. But there are some things that more specifically, a uh, psychodynamic perspective uh, stresses. First of all, is because there is a kind of gap or distance between the ego and its ideal. The ego is not a, one single thing. The ego is a result from, this identi from multiple identifications, and some of them stand above the ego. The ego must uh, fulfill this ideal in most times most of times uh the ego doesn't do it so uh the distance between ego and the ideal is variable and it's sustained by our, by our libidinal, libidinal drives desires investments and the whole set of mechanisms that are related to it fantasies, emotions, defenses, uh, etc., and so on. So again, we'll not uh, uh, go deeper on this theory, but it's important that you understand that uh, there is a gap 
the ego has an ideal. And the, sometimes the ideal uh, punishes the ego. Sometimes the ego doesn't feel loved by its ideal. So the self-representation of the ego is not restricted to a single, full, and sovereign identity. And even nowadays, in common sense, we usually think uh, like this. We think that our ego, our self, is sovereign. We have control of it. We know what we are, but we don't. We don't know what we are. We know a little of what we are, and we change. So, more important, our relation to ideals and the self-representation is mostly unconscious. So, these identifi identificatory, identificatory, sorry, people, traits are more like a fluid mosaic where we can find the so-called cultural characteristics of the self, the primary language, the ethnic heritage, the gender and sexual identity, the profession, and so on. So there are multiple identifications that uh, are embedded and that are arranged into our ego, but most of them, they are not uh, uh, homogenous. They are not, uh, most of them are in conflict with each other or in uh, contradiction with each other. So most, uh, what I am as a professor is not quite what I am as a man or what I am as a father. And there are differences between this and they come into conflict and that makes people suffer because the ego doesn't know to which ideal he must respond. That identificatory complex is sustained by narcissistic libido, the investment dynamics of the narcissistic libido, which can named, we can be named as self-love, as Freud used to say, and or as you say nowadays, self-esteem. Self-esteem is the value of the ego has on itself, mediated by the ideal. And the self-esteem is not only the value of the ego about himself, itself. It, it also sets the power, the strength of ego to work out its conflicts. The more self-esteem, in a psychoanalytical sense, the more of libi narcissistic libido that the ego has uh, available to itself makes the ego uh, more resilient, more uh, capable of uh, changing uh mobilizing defenses changes and be flexible on all those demands from the other instance of personality so uh what is important and that's another tendency of our class here in brazil we, we talk about uh, psychopathology also so many identity issues that we know from normal life, love, uh, grief, but also on uh, psychopathological outcomes. So these feelings of guilt, shame, insufficiency, and even emptiness are uh, emotional expressions of these identity issues of the ego. And they are related to some psychopathology, some disorders, like depressive and melancholic states, borderline conditions, and even narcissistic personalities. 
So that's just a, a, an overview of what we discussed here in our class in Brazil. But I think that it gives a lot to work with and to discuss in how we understand the sense of self, the self-esteem, and how it is a central core for our personality, for our, not only for our sense of being, but for our uh, idea of ourselves and how we work out the issues that life, reality, desires set to us. So, in conclusion, we must say that identity is the core of our personality. It is a sense of self that arises from dynamics comprising cognitive representations and emotional investments. It is promoted and cultivated from culture by our personal relations in the social context. In general, it confirms the idea that we must be loved to become human and to be able to love in attribution, but also that we must deal with some, some size, some type of hate to differentiate, differentiate ourselves from others, to stand for ourselves. However, and that's our contribution, these relations are, and dynamics are quite complex for two reasons. The first one is that our relation to physical or material, material reality, concrete reality, is mediated by our subjectivity, meaning that our mindset interpretation, or as we, we psychoanalysts like to call fantasies. So the fantasies mediate the relation of the self, the ego, with the reality. And in second place, that this external and internal relation are mostly unconscious. So the personality or subject is mostly driven by other forces, inner forces and outer forces, uh, forces from the outside that most psychological and sociological uh, theories will we will theorize, understand, but psychoanalysis insists on this idea that there are inner forces, there is an inner other, an otherness inside the personality, the subject. Uh, and the personality is driven by these forces, but it's always sustained by the necessary illusion that somehow the sense of self of the ego endures. That's very important because the ego for psychoanalysis is an illusion. The ego is not an identity, a singular individual unity. The ego is a sense of continuity, of uh, a sense of being over the time, something that recognizes itself as the same thing. But this illusion is necessary to our personality. Because if you don't have the sense of self, the sense that the I endures, the I will be here tomorrow, that the I knows itself, that the I has strength to decide what to do, we don't live. So, uh, even though the unity of ego, the identity of ego is, a, is an ideal itself, it's the most important uh, feature of our motivation. So, uh, it's important to say that because the real, uh, for psychoanalysis, the subject is not the ego, is not the id, is not the superego. The personality, the subject, is this whole structure. 
So the id is a subject, the ego is a subject, and even the, the superego is an, an agent on this complex structure. So that's how people and students, that's how we understand in a psychoanalytical perspective, the sense, the idea of personality and the sense of self, okay? Uh, that's what I had to say for you. I hope that the, the presentation helps you to understand my, my rust English. Uh, I put the, the subtitles on, so I think there will be no, no problems with that. So I'll finish with this beautiful uh, picture of helplessness uh, and with two quotes from Freud. One that says, the initial helplessness of human beings is the source of all, all moral motives. So uh, all that drives our society, our moral, uh, our culture is a way to surpass, to sustain, to give, to, to give holding to our helplessness because uh, the human being born helpless and uh, helplessness is the horizon of our subjective. Another quote is, it's one that is closer to what is saw today and says, all individual psychology is at, at first and foremost a social psychology. That, that what I said before, the individual self is, oh, sorry, the individual self is a product of the interjection of culture into personality. Uh, so that's it. I, I'll leave you here. I spoke too much. And thank you. Obrigado. Arigato. <laughs> uh, these are some pictures from Bauru here in Brazil uh, to, you, to know better from where we speak. And I hope that this class helps you with your discussions and hope to see you soon on our videos. Bye bye. Agora já era.